Hello, everyone. My name is Jaime Lozada, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the third Urban Regeneration Symposium. And it's interesting that I'm sitting here at this stage welcome you because at the moment I'm actually have with me a great friend that happens to be one of my students many years ago. I'm, coming, I'm actually talking about perhaps uh, more than 20 years when Isvan completed his training in implant dentistry at Loma Linda. It was one of the most rewarding experiences as a professor to have a student like Isvan, and we have all kinds of stories that we'd like to share with you. Uh, one of those stories is when Isvan decided to do some things in the program they have never done before. So Isvan, why don't you tell us that story? Yeah, so <clears throat> originally when I, when I did the interview, um, you know, I, kn I know that you know, in the interview you don't want to say, I mean, normally it's better to say not to do, that you don't want to do a lot of, lot of surgeries. So I remember that I had a question that, like, what do you want to do here? And I know that Loma Linda is the home of the sinus. So I said, I want to do one sinus <laughs> and maybe some implants. But when I started the program, you know, I was so inspired to, to try to do a more re-augmentation that we had, uh, Dr. Lozada invited me for lunch and uh -huh. we had lunch. And it was really nice uh, that, you know, the first week on the program. And I, during the lunch, I, I told you, I want to do vertical rejugmentation. And the spoon stopped in his hand. <laughs> I remember and the way you looked at me and just said, very calm, on a human. <laughs> this is how we started. Yeah, I remember that uh, specifically because you had already some experience at UCLA um, uh, working uh, with, with Sasha, Sasha Jovanovic. Yes. And uh, you were already contemplating doing some things, and you end up expanding more on that and making out of that little idea a big idea. So um, I believe you had some patients that you were able to treat at Lomlenda. You gave uh, me the first patient. I gave you the first patient, yes. Which was great. I mean, it's like, I, I, I just said it also, do, told it during the lecture that. That honestly, I don't, you know, this is an end of the 90s. I don't know anybody who would give a fellow or a resident a patient like that. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you. It was uh, something that I saw in you. Um, it was a, a potential that about to grow. And, um, and that was very exciting. There's one thing that I also remember. Somehow you develop a camaraderie with the Hungarian a population yes. in Los Angeles. Yeah. And you had patients that came in. Um, I remember one particular patient that used to live in a boat. Yes. Um, he still is my patient now after you left. Yeah. Uh, what did you do for that patient, remember? So uh, he, he was in Angeles and the big vertical defect on the right side. And I did a, a vertical rejugmentation, bilateral sinus vertical rejugmentation. And I, I still remember we took, I took a chin graft. And you know, I took the graft, he, he saw one little piece was flying out, and, and even after 15 years, he said, remember when, when my chin was a little bit flying out, you know? But you know, that we had a very great relationship with that patient, and that patient actually uh, visited us in Budapest, and sometimes I went home from my office, and he was there with his teeth on the implants, and um, dinner was ready, he was cooking for me, yes. for us, dinner. Unfortunately, he passed away 20 years after the yes, implants were Yes, yes, I still saw it as a patient, yeah. I remember Robert. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to ask you something about your classmates, too, because over the years, uh, we had some interesting students, very nice people as well. Uh, tell me some of them that you remember that created an impact on you. Okay, that's a very good point. When I went to Loma Linda, you know, I saw the people, the residents are serious. And for example, Dr. Pericles, uh -huh. okay? And he was always talking very fast, very extremely friendly yes. person. And he said, well, Ishvan, why don't you take the California board? I'm like, California board? I'm like, you kidding me? That's the most difficult exam you can ever take. Well, I took it and you should take it too. And um, that's why I have a California board. Very good. That's why I have a California license. I already had the written, but I knew that the, 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 the tests are so difficult. But I said, no, you practice, you do this, this and that. So for example, that one. 
the, everybody was supportive and uh, and inspiring. And you know, I had another. We, there was another uh, resident, Dr. Kameyer, who was doing a lot of blocks, and I was believing in more guided morning generation. So we had a lot of exchange. I like blocks. I like GBR, and that okay, I do only this. You do only that, and and. Um, then Edgar also started, who was also like really nice. Then Dr. Umezu. Dr. Umezu, yes. Okay, yes. Taka, who's very, very good friend still today. I visited him this year in Tokyo, and I stayed in his house. Oh, very nice. I stayed in his house uh, two nights a week. He let me sleep. We lived in Los Angeles, I had to drive a lot. And he was at, at the re a preceptor, such a hard, you know, I mean, these guys were preceptor. That means that you're assisting to the resident. Right. And. You made them, you inspired them that these guys were working from the morning until the evening and they were not even sure they're going to accept it to the real program. Very good, very good. I think that's so much support. And what about from the faculty side? Is there any faculty that inspired you or created uh, something in your development as a student? So, I mean, it's you and, of course, number one and Dr. Khan. I mean, you're the two most. You, um, you di I did the first sinus with you, mm -hmm. but I was so nervous that you gave a sinus lecture at seven o'clock, and I was so nervous to do the sinus. I didn't come to, I didn't know, and I didn't come to the lecture. I thought it was a literature review. I said, I'm, I'm going to miss it. <laughs> and the people come out and said, Dr. Lozada just gave such a good lecture about the sinus. And I'm like, oh. But you came and, and you told me, okay, cut here, do the window here. So I did it. Okay, here's your next instrument, put it here. So I put it here. And in one hour, I was done with the sinus and two implants. So I, I came out like, I know the sinus. Next sinus, without him. Two hours, I perforated the sinus. <laughs> I put the window in the wrong place. So I realized that when somebody's telling you what to do exactly, that makes it easier. Right. You know, that's exactly how I felt when I did my very first sinus. I didn't know what I was doing. And I happened to have as a mentor, Dr. James, who happens to be the first person that wrote an article, as you know, yes. about the maxillary yes. sinus with Dr. Boyne. Excellent. Hey, listen, uh, during the, your presentation, I was monitoring the uh, questions. There are several questions, but there are some questions that were repetitive regarding the medical management of patients. Medical management. Medical management of patients postoperatively. Yeah. I know that Great. we're going to save some questions for the end yeah. later on, but um, I think it would be nice to hear that because you gave an excellent presentation, but sometimes yeah. that's the question things, that many people yeah, have. Yeah, so I, it's actually quite simple. It's almost the same as what we did in Loma Linda. <laughs> so we still use uh, amoxicillin, the patient is not allergic to penicillin. Um, two grams, one hour before the surgery. Then we give 500 milligrams. For the big cases, we tend to give it longer. So 10 days for huge cases, sometimes like two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, three times a day. Um, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, what do you do then now today? Because it was clindamycin. Exactly. And I'm sure you're aware of these controversial papers that is starting to show that clindamycin yeah. has some ill effects, yeah. specifically with bone graft. Yeah. So, I mean, as, you know, when you ask me to prepare my lecture on current trends, that's a section of my lecture. Okay. So Perfect. you will see that Perfect. during my presentation. Because I also like to say that you can give the patient clindamycin or Evian, because it's almost, probably Evian is maybe even better than clindamycin, because it doesn't do much. So hope that the patient's not allergic to penicillin, we give penicillin. Right. Then pain medication, ibuprofen is the most well accepted. However, we use also something called, it's a fast absorbing diclofenac potassium. It's mm -hmm. available in Europe for cataflam acts really rapidly. Um, chlorhexidine rinses after 24 hours. We do a lot of oral sedation with, with triazolam, with hotzium. Two pills as in Loma Linda we did it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I always, if I pin, if I, you know, use the mallet on somebody, then I, I want to give some medication before. Okay, very good. Most of the well, I'm going to change the subject a little bit. And I like to, do, to give a message perhaps to future students. Looking at the audience here today during the, your lecture, I saw many young faces. I saw also, you know, older people there in, the, in, your, in the lecture. But for those that are interested to study more and try to get more involved, besides your wonderful institute where you are training students, 
Uh, what message would you say to someone that is seriously interested in developing their academic life? I really like if somebody's interested in this. And I, I really, you know, if I see somebody's interested, I, I enjoy it so much, and I want that person to be successful. I want to help, because I know how much help I got. Yes. And that, when you, when you grow, you appreciate it more. You know, those little things. You cut a little bit here, you do this. You want to inspire people. If you inspire people, and they're interested, they're serious, you have to support them. It's, it's, it's um, morally also important. You support the next generation, and, uh, and, you wanna, and I love seeing if, if a, a younger doctor is doing a lecture. Yes. A younger doctor is doing a good bone graph. I think it's great, and I'm very proud of that. Very so, good. Yeah, that's my thing. Any advice on, on scientific writing? Scientific writing, yeah. Well, they're perfect. That's a great question. So, I don't know if you remember, but you I told do. me. I do. I hope you're going to say that story. <laughs> <laughs> you told me when, when I did the first bone graph that, that you're going to help. You also, the, the school and you help financially too for my program. And you said that, um, that you want me to write an article in the Jomi. And I said, okay, but I didn't know how to write. And uh, it took me some years. Yes. When I submitted the first paper, we got back a, uh, the review. a review that was like five, six pages long. <laughs> I'm very thankful to the reviewers that did not just reject it. And then I bought a book, How to Write an Article. I uh, uh, had a, like a, a, a language editor, and I took another year and a half. But when we submitted the second time the paper, it was accepted without any revisions. That's right. And I think if somebody's in a program uh, or a resident, start to learn immediately writing and do at least one article because that is making the first step. And that yeah. I, I missed myself I, because I was lazy. Yes. <laughs> well, I think you have given great advice and, um, and also we had a wonderful opportunity to listen to you. I'm amazed myself. It's been uh, probably two or three years since I saw one of your lectures. And just in this short period of time, you have done incredible, incredible work, Isvan. I'm very, very proud of you, Thank you as very much. your professor and as your friend. And I only see more and more success in the future for you. Thank you so, so thank much. You.